Welcome everyone to the continuation of our innovative technologies um, segment. Um, it is my pleasure um, to introduce Dr. Jing Zhu, Assistant Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the School of Medicine at Oregon National Primate Research Center and Center for Embryonic Cell and Gene Therapy. She earned her PhD degree in biochemistry and molecular biology and obtained her postdoctoral training in neuroscience and reproductive science at Oregon Health and Science University. She was appointed a Birch Scholar, which is a very prestigious NICHD Building Interdisciplinary Research Careers in Women's Health Award, and became faculty member at Oregon Health and Science University um, in 2012. Dr. Xu's research investigates the production and direct action of paracrine factors and hormones in ovarian follicles using a non-human primate model. And I'm very excited to introduce her, or to welcome her to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Loranda, for the introdu introduction. Good morning, and I want to thank the Uncle Fertility Consortium for giving me this opportunity to share with you the research progress in in vitro maturation of primordial follicles to yield eggs. As introduced by Dr. Woodruff, in vitro follicle maturation is to provide options for fertility preservation in patients with POI. POI is characterized by the reduced ovary reserve or the decreased number of uh, follicles in the ovary. Follicles are basic functional units in the ovary. Each follicle contains it's really hard. Uh, no, I don't think I have a pointer here. That's okay. Uh, each follicle contains an, an oocyte surrounded by uh, follicular cells. While the oocyte is responsible for fertility, uh, grand, uh, follicular cells produce ovarian steroids to, to support uh, endocrine function. So p uh, patients, pediatric patients with POI may experience delayed uh, puberty and adult patients may experience early menopause and infertility. And the possible cause for POI include um, genetic disorders such as Turner syndrome and uh, sickle cell disease, autoimmune disease, and uh, ovarian toxic medical treatment as introduced by Dr. Kim, and exposure to hazardous uh, substances. Current fertility preservation options uh, for p uh, patients with POI include embryo, egg, and uh, ovarian tissue cryopreservation. And ovarian tissue cryo preservation is more practical for pediatric patients and patients requiring immediate ovarian toxic medical treatment. Ovarian tissue cryo preservation is to preserve primordial follicles uh, located in the ovarian cortex. As shown in this uh, picture, the primordial follicles are on the lower bottom uh, to the left. A primordial follicle contains a primordial oocyte surrounded by a single layer of flat pregranular cells. When pre, uh, primordial follicles are activated, um, pregranular cells become cuboidal granular cells. Uh, during further granular cell proliferation, uh, there will be multiple layers of granular cells surrounding the follicle, and the follicle become um, from primary to secondary and to multi-layer preantral pre follicles. And then an antral cavity is formed in the granular cell layer. The follicle become antral follicles. Then the granular cells differentiate to form cremulous cells surrounding the oocyte, and uh, mural granular cells lining the follicle wall. In women, each cycle, one of the antral follicles is selected for continued growth and maturation to produce mature oocytes for fertilization. So in order for um, the primordial follicles to generate mature oocytes or egg, um, one possibility is to tra transplant the ovarian tissue back to the patient. As mentioned by Dr. Woodruff, there could be, there is invasive pr procedure and there's a risk of reintroducing malignant cells back to the patients. That's why in vitro follicle maturation is developed 
to uh, support follicular development in vitro to yield mature oocytes or eggs. In vitro follicle maturation is successful in mice um, using a multi-step protocol. So first step, um, ovaries from a, um, fetal, fetal ovaries or cultured as a whole organ, primordial follicles are activated and grow to the preantral pre stage in eight days. Then oocyte granulosa cell complexes are isolated or isolated from the cult, uh, cultured organ for another eight days of culture. And as you can see in the first picture on the bottom, healthy germinal vascular GV oocytes were harvested from the culture. And when the oocytes are underwent in vitro maturation or IVM with exposure to gonadotropin, the oocytes matured to metaphase two or M2 stage in 17, um, 17 days uh, and then um, after in vitro fertilization, those oocytes um, were fertilized and divide uh, uh, and support the further embryonic development to early embryonic stage. After embryo transferred, uh, live offspring, a total of 60 live offspring were obtained by these two studies. To date, two research group reported in vitro follicle maturation from primordial follicles using human ovarian tissue. And different from the work in mice, um, this modest step uh, protocol start with cortical tissue culture. And the primordial follicles were activated and grow to the preantral stage. And then preantral follicles were isolated for additional individual follicle culture and to the antral stage. And then cumulus oocyte complexes were isolated for IVM. Metaphase two oocytes were obtained, although if you look at the metaphase two oocyte picture, the po polar, although the pro polar body appeared to be larger, uh, relatively large um, compared to uh, the metaphase two oocyte, the spindle structure was typical in this case. And another study was reported by our research group using the similar three-step uh, culture protocol. Uh, the only difference is the group culture is used for the second step. And I will get into the details. The first step is to activate primordial follicles in the ovarian tissue. Um, primordial follicles can, can activate, um, can be activated spontaneously in vitro. Um, although uh, ovarian tissue or the ovary were cultured in serum-free medium, uh, a portion of primordial follicles are activated in cultured mouse ovary. And all primordial follicles were activated in cultured ovarian cortex from cows and monkeys. The reason for that could be the removal of inhibitory signals such as the hippo yep signaling pathway. And another is, as mentioned by Dr. Hayashi, and the alteration of a physical hypoxia state of the follicles. As you can see in this picture, the top, top one is from the mouse ovary, the bottom is from monkey ovary. The expression of carbonate um, anhydrase 9, which is a, in a cellular, intracellular indicator of hypoxia, the brown color indicating positive signaling. Uh, CA9 uh, expression uh, are located in the primordial oocyte and pre uh, granular cells in both the mouse ovary and the, the monkey ovary. And when we do or, uh, ovarian organ culture or uh, ovarian tissue culture, those organ or tissue are cultured at 25% uh, 20 oxygen. But the in vivo, the ovarian cortex is a vascular uh, region. Uh, oocyte concentration is around one to two percent. So the increased uh, primordial follicle activation uh, during ovarian tissue culture could be due to the high oxygen. And for the monkeys and the cows, it could, the increased primordial follicle activation could be due to the oxygenation during tissue processing. 
Another question is, what's the marker for primordial follicle activation? I want to introduce anti-malarian hormone, AMH. AMH is produced by granular cells in growing follicles. As you can see in this uh, warning section from a monkey ovary, uh, PM stands for primordial follicles. Pre-granular cells do not produce AMH. AMH start to um, become evident when pre-granular cells become cuboidal granular cells in primary hot follicles. When the preantral uh, pre follicles grow, grow larger, they produce higher levels of AMH, and when after antral formation, AMH expression decreases. So AMH is detectable in the culture media when there's only one single preantral primary follicles are cultured in the culture dish. So AMH is very sensitive um, and non-invasive marker for primordial follicle activation. This picture is to show you a human primordial follicle, which is tightly uh, associated with a stroma. To activate primordial follicles, over cortical tissue was cut into small fragments with a diameter around 300 micron, each piece containing more than five primordial follicles. In three weeks, um, primordial follicles grow to the preantral stage. As you can see, the preantral follicle in this section contain, contains a healthy GVO size with multiple layers of granular cells and intact beta membrane. The, large, the enlarged picture is to show you that uh, the physical support from the stroma is critical for early growth of the, primor, uh, of the follicles. As you can see, at, at the end of the week one of culture, the, one, the follicle located in the middle of the tissue has an intact single layer of granular cells. However, the one close to the edge, granular cells migrate away from the oocyte. MH production was not detectable in the first week of culture, and the concentration increased in week two and plateaued in week three, which means primordial follicles were stayed quiescent during the first week of culture. They are activated in the second week and grow, the primordial follicles become pre preantral follicles and they grow larger to produce increased level of MH. And then by the time of the third week, it's time to isolate those follicles for a continued follicle culture. And indeed, MH expression was detectable in the developing preantral follicle, as shown in the brown color. Next step is to culture primordial follicles to the antral stage. Um, there are several important factors during this stage. First one is gonadotropin, such as uh, FSH. Although um, preantral pre follicle growth uh, is thought to be FSH independent in vivo, FSH is required for human preantral follicle survival in vitro. Um, a naturally occurring FSH is a mixture of uh, FS, FSH forms, different forms. Although those, those FSH forms have the same peptide structure, they have different glycosylation patterns due to post-translational modifications. Um, currently, there are three types of FSH are used in the FF clinic. Uh, the first one is highly purified urinary-derived uh, FSH. And in the U.S., human recombinant FSH alpha and beta are used for ovarian stimulation. Compared to natural FSH, recombin recombinant FSH have, a shorter, have shorter sugar chains. And uh, FSH alpha is more acidic than FSH beta. So when monkey follicles were cultured uh, in dish with the three different kind of uh, FSH, the natural FSH group gave us the highest antral follicle formation rate. So FSH dose need to be adjusted depending on the, the type that, be, that is used. Another factor is per, uh, pericrine factor regulation need to be considered. Um, I give an example of AMH. Our study showed that AMH promotes preantral follicle growth and inhibit antral follicle maturation. As you can see in the top, uh, panel, the figure in the middle, 
Um, cultured monkey follicles usually form an antrum from the preantral stage to the antral stage, from the antrum at culture week three. Uh, with addition of MH, antral formation started early in week two. The bottom panel showed uh, um, estradiol production by the cultured follicles after antral formation. After antral formation, the control uh, cultured follicles produce high amount of estradiol. After uh, MH addition, estradiol production is inhibited. So from there, we can modulate MH in the culture media, uh, MH addition during the preantral stage and the uh, uh, depletion during the antral stage may promote follicle growth in vitro. There are several markers can be used to assess follicle growth in vitro. Uh, for during for preantral follicles, MH is uh, uh, is a great marker as shown in this figure. The top um, um, line is the growing, refers to gr gr growing follicles. MH production increases during pre-antral follicle growth. After antral formation, MH uh, concentration in the media plateaued and then decreased once the antral follicle grow larger. This uh, production pattern is similar to what happens in in vivo developed follicles. The bottom line is the no growing follicles. If the follicle don't grow, they don't form antrum, uh, MH production remain the same over the five weeks of individual follicle culture. For antral follicles, um, estradiol production can be used as a, a marker, uh, as you can see in the uh, figure on the right. Estradiol level increased after antral formation and the the larger follicles produce higher levels of estrogen, estradiol. In addition, actin A, uh, I didn't mention inhibin B follow the same production pattern as AMH for preantral follicles. And actin A, IGF2, VEGF follow the same expression pa pattern as the estradiol. So the follicle, preantral pre follicles can be cultured individually to the antral stage in six weeks. That's human follicles. Um, so the survival rate of follicle is about um, 65%. Uh, follicles can die in the middle of the culture, either during the preantral stage or during the uh, antral stage. Follicle deaths can start with oocyte degeneration, as shown on the top panel, uh, or granular cell apoptosis. Uh, as shown in the bottom panels, um, to extrude uh, the oocyte. For surviving follicles, uh, the isolated preantral follicles can grow to the small antral stage uh, with uh, increase that for about 4.5 increasing in, increase in diameter. And when you look at the MH production in the media, MH production increased during preantral follicle growth, plateaued after antral formation, and decreased in large antral follicles. And the histology staining showed an oocyte, healthy oocyte surrounded by cumulus cells and multiple layers of uh, granulus cells. Preantral follicles can also be cultured in groups of three to five. Uh, those isolated follicles form uh, aggregated together and form an organoid-like structure um, during the first week of culture. By the time of the sixth week of culture, uh, those follicles form an antrum to become antral follicles, as shown in the, in the picture. As you can see in the histology staining, um, there's a healthy GVO size surrounded by cumulus cells with multiple layers of uh, granular cells, mirror granular cells, and antral space. There are two antral follicles there. The enlarged picture shows, I wanna show you, this is a cell, a cumulus cell, uh, at metaphase stage of mitosis. Um, the actively dividing cells are pretty common in mouse ovary sections, but it's very rare in human ovary sections. Um, so this indicating that cells are actively, actively dividing in vitro, during in vitro development. And also there are uh, aromatase encoded by CYP19 expression in granular cells, which are responsible for estrogen production. 
and uh, seven alpha hydroxylase encoded by CYP17 expression in thicker cells, the brown color in the picture, um, which are responsible for androgen production. Finally, oocyte maturation. Um, the, the order for the germinal vesicle oocyte uh, to be to be uh, to mature to the metaphase two um, M2 stage, one uh, strategy is to apply gonadotropin stimulation to cultured antral follicles. As you can see in the picture, that's the monkey follicles. If cultured monkey follicles, uh, the antral follicles have a well-developed cumulus oocyte complex, or COC, uh, gonadotropin stimulation can trigger uh, ovulation in, in the culture dish to produce metaphase to oocyte. Another strategy is to do IVM, that is cumulus oocyte complex culture. Because we cannot fertilize human oocytes, uh, human, uh, the oocyte quality assessment can be done by polarized light microscopy, which is an invasive pro procedure to look at the myotic spindle position, immunofluorescence staining to look at the myotic spindle morphology, and transmission electron microscopy to uh, assess M2 oocyte specific ultra structures, such as microvilli, cortical cranules, and mitochondria distribution. In addition, epigenetic and gene expressions can be analyzed as well. Um, we, to date, we have, been, have not been able to obtain M2 oocytes from individually cultured human follicles. Although the follicle, the cultured follicle, antral follicles have uh, well-developed COCs, uh, after 34 hours of HCG and EGF treatment, all oocytes remain at the GV stage. Uh, you can see that in the immunofluorescence staining, the GV nucleus, there, there's, there were uh, abundant transuronal projections showing the connection between cumulus cells and oocyte. The reason for them not achieving myotic maturation could be that the size are relatively small. In this case, 105 in average, micron in average, which is relatively small in the uh, human oocyte. But we were able to obtain metaphase 2 oocyte from group cultured follicles. Um, after the, uh, uh, we did IVM for 48 hours, and some of the oocytes had uh, the COCs had cumulus cell expansion, but the oocytes remain at uh, a GB stage. Some of them don't respond, they still have compact cumulus cells. But uh, about 20% mature to metaphase 2 stage. As you can see, uh, it has, the, the oocytes have proper si uh, polar body size and the uh, myotic spindle position as shown in the, the red. Um, picture, the, the post-scope picture. And electron microscopy show the uh, chromosome alignment in the myotic spindle, cortical granules under the plasma membrane of the oocyte, and the microwave light projection out of the, um, on the oocyte based on membrane. There are round and elongated mitochondria um, associated with vesicles and smooth, e smooth ER, which are typical for M2 oocytes. To summary, uh, to summarize, um, in vitro follicle maturation supports human follicular development from the primordial to the antral stage to produce oocytes competent for myotic maturation. Currently, multi-step protocol is needed uh, including ovarian cortical tissue culture, three-dimensional follicle culture, and uh, oocyte in vitro maturation. In vitro follicle maturation protocol, protocol can be further optimized to improve follicular development and oocyte competence. For example, we haven't provided any stimulatory uh, factors to the primordial follicles yet. So st stimulatory factors can be applied to promote primordial follicle activation. And also, in addition to MH, other uh, pericrine factors or uh, uh, regulatory factors can be considered to promote preantral to antral follicle growth in the second step. 
uh, omics studies such as genomics, proteomics, metabolomics uh, will be helpful to identify critical factors during this follicle growth stage. And all site quality can be further, further analyzed by comparing in vitro and in vivo developed oocytes. And of course, for clinical applications, uh, in vitro follicle maturation need to be done using cryopreserved and recovered ovarian tissue. Using the protocol developed by Dr. Mary Zelinsky, we're able to uh, cryopreserve human ovarian tissue. You can see the um, the normal, the typical morphology of primordial follicles in cryopreserved, um, uh, recovered ovarian tissue. And after one week of tissue culture, primordial follicles were activated as shown in BRDU staining, which labeled actively dividing cells. As you can see, some of the pre-granular cells become uh, granular cells. After three weeks of culture, we can see multi-layer pre follicles develop in those little um, cortical tissues. Uh, of course, next step will be, will be isolating those pre follicles for subsequent follicle, um, in vitro follicle growth. I would like to thank my previous lab um, staff, trainees, and collaborators at Oregon Health Science University and the technical support from the research course and my previous um, colleagues at OHSU. And the work was done um, with financial support from NIH. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take your questions. Uh, this was a great talk. Um, you did answer part of my question at the very end in your summary, but I had a question about the cortical culture. Uh, you said that you don't add factors to that culture uh, at this point, but is there serum in the medium? There is serum-free medium, yes. Okay, if so basically just base amine. medium and nothing else added. Base okay. medium with FSH. So, uh, uh, okay. With FSH, insulin, selenium, yeah, the basic stuff. So that's the condition for the development from primordial to primary follicle in the cortical culture? Right. Did but I, I don't think F FSH at that point is critical. We put FSH because once the, the primordial follicles are activated, they become preandial follicles. We want to support preandial follicle survival. Mm -hmm. That's why we put FSH. But I don't think FSH is critical for primordial follicle activation. Right. Thanks. Uh, thank you for a very nice talk. So I just have uh, one question. So what happens if you puncture the uh, antral follicles um, artificially? What happens in the oocyte and the COC, in the human? Uh, culture COC, you mean? Yeah. What like, if, you, if you puncture, the, you, you culture the 3D culture mm -hmm. so that you can keep the structure of the follicles. Right. But, but what happens if you... Uh, tear, break the break uh, such a structure. The yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening in the outside? And, uh. So the, the early stage follicles, that pre antral follicles from humans, if you culture them uh, on the uh, traditional, let's say conventional culture dish, granule cells migrated from migrate from away from the oocyte, and the oocyte will be exposed, mm -hmm. and then the follicle will not survive. The oocyte die as well. So that's why um, the pre antral follicles need to be cultured in 3D to maintain the 3D architecture. We use low attachment plates, so you don't need matrix uh, embedding at all. So they just keep their um, 3D architecture. After pre follicles develop to antral stage, you can isolate the COCs out of the antral follicle and culture them in just uh, the, the common culture dish. It, it can survive. The COC culture can survive, 2D culture. But the, uh, the um, what is the um, percentage of the becoming the M2 oocyte? So that better in the or become M2s if the COCs were isolated from in vivo developed small intro follicles, similar size. The maturation rate can be 90 percent oh, in our condition. Thank you. Uh, but for in vitro 
uh, currently, as you can see, 20, around 20% 20 okay. okay. similar size. That's, I will say, uh, one between one to two millimeter size. Thank you. Thank you.